Hey, good morning. Back for real now and welcome to uh, episode 92 of Talking to Artists. I can't believe I am closing in on 100 episodes. That is really pretty awesome. Um, so glad you could join us. Really want to apologize for the mix up last week. I don't know what happened. My Instagram wasn't working. I couldn't get it to uh, connect. Totally my fault. Allison was freaking out, but <laughs> thankfully she's able to reschedule for today. So I'm pretty excited about that. A couple of other quick housekeeping things. Just wanted to uh, let people know I'm going to be in Vancouver next week doing some kayaking. So next week I will not be doing a talking to artists. But after that, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, we're getting back into the regular schedule. So pretty excited about that. Um, the other thing is that um, I will be then doing the baby studio tour. There are uh, 22 artists showing in eight locations. So check my website for that. So that's kind of cool because you get to go into artist studios and art and kind of check out and see see what they're doing, which is always a fun thing. After that, I've got the North Toronto show, which is again at my house in North Toronto. So that's always fabulous to reconnect with my neighbors and looking forward to that. Heading off to Ottawa to do the new art festival and then the Riverdale Art Walk, one of my favorite long time um, shows. I think this will be my 13th, 14th year. I'm not sure yet, but anyway, looking forward to seeing everyone there. So uh, without further ado, let's see whether or not Allison has joined us. I know she was kind of freaking out when I went live at 10 o'clock because uh, <laughs> she thought. Of okay. She is invited. Woohoo! It works. Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Technology can save us. <laughs> You know, it was so frustrating. I, I probably, uh, last week, I sort of, I had to, I disconnected my phone, I rebooted my Instagram, I redid everything, and it was just like, it must just have been an Instagram thing. I don't think actually it was me, but my kids always make fun of me, because they always say that I had this weird technical thing where anything I touch that's uh, technology gets basically screws up. Yes. My phones, my watches, my yeah. laptops. I was just talking to my brother. He says, Allison, you're the only one that can take a plug-and-play device and not be able to use it. It just, you know, I think I'm, you know, I should be quite proficient, but I'm just not. So, oh, well, what can you do? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. My kids think I've got some sort of magnetic charge. Even when I was working corporately and I had a laptop and the IT guy goes, oh, come on, Kate. Like, honestly, you dropped it, right? I'm like, I did nothing to it. It just corrupted again. <laughs> well, I know, you know, restart it unplug it yeah. plug it back in uninstall it reinstall it like you know we get all that and certainly we did all that last week but you know so yeah today the stars align <laughs> but we should have done the coolest live with you in your kayak and me in my kayak and oh, oh that would have been that cool. would have been so cool but that's okay we're good <laughs> yeah well it's funny because we actually didn't even get our kayaks done because there was so much stuff to do at the cottage like we kind of they're up in the garage right now yeah. And, uh, but you know, it was just so, it was such an incredible weekend. I, but even just, you know, yeah. cutting the grass and I have to say, confess, I did spend an awful lot of time just sitting drinking my tea, watching the birds <laughs> like <Yeah>. hours and hours. <laughs> I know there's time you have to sort of sit on the dog and relax and other times where you have to rake a million leaves. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. About. But yeah, it was good. Oh, good. Oh my so God. where's your, where's your cottage? Um, so we have a cottage, a family cottage up in Halliburton. It's on Lake. Cal oh, right. Limog. And so my mom and her family, like they've owned it for 76 years. So, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Lots of changes happen, but you know, the cottage is like 75 years old and, and um, you know, you have all the amenities of home, but uh, it's just, you know, it, there's so much change. My mom gets really frustrated. And I said, you know what, at the end of the day, you sit on the dock and you have the same view that you've seen for years and years you know, and so yeah. you just have to breathe and, you know, change is going to happen. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I know we, um, our, our, ours is also in my family cottage too. So it's been in the family for, I guess, about 50 years now. Oh. And my husband and I bought it just before COVID, which has been great, but it's very much changed the way you use the cottage because now it's like, it's a lot of work. <laughs> like, it's fabulous, <laughs> but, you know, it's, <laughs> we haven't quite figured out how to kind of bring the relaxing back into the, the cottage, but. Yeah, it's uh, it's the same thing where, you know, you kind of like, I can't believe that person's got their music on. And I'm like, you know what, we're sounding like old ladies. Like the reality is, is that we were, you know, I mean, and the reality is, too, is the lake, you know, the sounds travel so much over the lake yeah. that it's not even really probably that loud. Like you can hear full conversations of people that are kayaking across the lake. You can. Yeah. On a certain day, if the wind's going the right way and, you know, but you just have to wait yeah. and find those times where the loons are calling and. 
you can chase the heron in your kayak and things like that. So, you know, it definitely, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so inspiring just to be outside, right? Yes, and I agree. You know, during COVID, it's like, and when you're feeling stress, take two glasses of water and take two walks and then reassess yeah. the situation. Right? So. Yeah, I really felt that um, when I got back last night, I'm like, wow, I didn't really fully realize how much I needed it. Like, it's like a drug now. And it's only been a month, like, but you know, since I've been up there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I just feel so much better today, like this week mentally, yeah. after, after having spent that time. Yeah. Um, the other thing is I've become quite a, a very amateur and not very good bird watcher, but I do love yeah. watching the birds. Yes. And I don't know if you've ever, I know this is totally, totally off tangent. Sorry for people that are watching, <laughs> looking for art stuff, but uh, have you ever, uh, do you ever use the Merlin app? No. It's, a, it's an app on your phone so you can identify birds. And so part of it is it'll, it'll actually ask you what size it is and everything, but they've got this new upgrade rate where you can actually have a sound thing. So it will record uh -huh. what's going on in the woods and then it'll identify the birds that you have in your space. Awesome. Well, I just have to ask it's, my husband. He, Dave is a bird man. He just, he's a nerd bird, right? And, uh, you know, we have the feeders and at the home and then at the cottage, like the blue jays just know he's there. Because they start squawking yeah. and out go the nuts. And we just sit and watch these beautiful blue jays, uh, you know, come and perch on the porch. So, um, yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah, well, you should try it. It's really neat because we actually found some birds that 100% were in the, in, the, in the woods. But I guess they don't, they don't come to the feeders. So we didn't actually know we had them there, which yeah. is kind of fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think, you know, when you go back to all of those, those basic needs of humans, just to be outside, to watch, notice things. Like, you know, it really... It, it really has inspired my journey as an artist to just, you know, stand back and breathe and just be in a spot and notice yeah. everything that's in that spot, you know? Um, and you know what? So my first career is, is in childcare and we have four preschools in Markham and we were, I was just on the go all the time, all the time, all the time. And you're home late at night and you're, and so I never, even though we had the cottage, it wasn't about hiking and kayaking. And it's just about the last five years where all of a sudden I've been absolutely addicted to being, you know, mm -hmm. in the forest, in the water, on a kayak and doing more physical rather than taking the motorboat out, you know, um, and walking every night is a practice of when I get home. Um, yeah. yeah. And certainly, you know, you, you start noticing so much more. No, I agree. Because when I was working full time too, like, you know, the cottage had a very different meaning for me. Like it was really, by the time I got there, I was exhausted, right? So really it was about plugging off, like just reading a book, sitting in the hammock, you know, like floating around in the floaties. We don't actually have any, um, any watercraft that's motorized. So it's all, and the lake is very small, which is great. So it's all pretty much kayaks and stuff. But I agree that I've spent much more time kind of really thinking about how I use the space and then you know when you kind of look at your art you're kind of going oh yeah nature inspires my art but you actually when you think about that deeply it's just like well yeah it's been the constant thread in my life that's kind of held everything together that allows me to kind of function and tap into those things that are not the alligators nipping at your ass yeah yeah and you know it's, it's really when you stop and you start noticing things like you know when when um uh, we have a beautiful field out the back here that uh and so you think, oh, well, you know, there's a, there's a green field. But really, when you're standing in it, like you notice the purples and the lavenders and the beiges and the dark greens and the brown and everything that's, that makes up that. And all of a sudden you think, oh, my goodness, you know, you've been taught that for years. When you experience it, when you slow down and you're back there, during COVID, we got to see sort of the whole cycle of from spring to fall. And the Us weeds too, are yeah. beautiful. Like I was picking all the wildflowers and the weeds and bringing them home. But, but, you know, that's what makes up, you know, what you were seeing is green. And it's really about taking the time to notice. Um, and I think mm -hmm. that's really, you know, uh, definitely. I think it's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool when you can kind of, you absorb the energy and the emotion of, of the space that you're standing in. Yes. Um, and, then, and then being able to kind of look at it I will say critically, but with an artist eye, like one of the things I love to do is, um, you know, if you're looking at even sunsets and stuff and you can kind of identify, how would I make that color? Like that color is cerulean with a little bit of white and a touch of naples yellow or whatever, you know, you kind of go through this whole thing, which I think is really kind of an interesting way because it forces you to really look really carefully yeah. at the colors that are actually, I'm just using the sunset because I was just doing that yesterday or the other day because mm -hmm. it was had all these lovely lavenders and stuff in it. Yeah. 
but I think it forces you to look at things really closely. And I remember my drawing teacher always say, you have to draw what you see, not what you think you see. And I think that that is really where an artist really brings, brings that close, I don't know, they, they look at something closely and they can kind of share it with other people and break it down in a way that often other people don't see. They see the green field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I think you know, looking at something, it's, it really is your interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, I look at something and then there's my lens that I'm painting through. And then there's the viewer, my collector's lens that then they add another layer of a relationship on top of that layer on top of what we're actually seeing. So, you know, it, it's yeah. really interesting now that, you know, I, I've got the art business going and, you know, it's been fast and furious over the last year and a half. Uh, I'm so blessed, but I'm working like 20 hours in the day to do first career jobs um, and second career jobs. And um, like, but it, it's just been, you know, now that I can sort of sit back and understand, now I'm looking deeper into what I'm actually doing and who is looking at it and what relationships that we're forming just by coming to see me or seeing my website and that. So, um, you know, and also finding out where watercolor fits in into the, the art collecting world because I, you know, I, I see these pieces that are absolutely huge, um, you know, on canvases. And I think, Oh my gosh, how could I ever do that in watercolor? And then it's like, but do I have to do that in watercolor? Mm -hmm. So, you know, my 52 peonies project was kind of my response to say, Oh, I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to make this great big peony in watercolor, but Oh, wait a minute. I don't even know how to paint a bloom. Right, so, <laughs> so I was kind of like, oh, okay, so you know, I I painted almost fifty two peonies. I started to paint um, a twenty seven. So stop! I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop you. Yeah. So can you go back? First of all, have, we haven't even done the like. Allison is a watercolor painter. If you hadn't already <laughs> got that, because I completely skipped over the old introduction thing. But I did want to did want to talk to you about the uh and i want to get back to kind of like your journey and stuff but what was the origin of the 52 peonies like start from the beginning on that because i think it's quite fascinating that you just randomly decide yeah i'm gonna do peonies don't know how i think i'm gonna do 52 of them <laughs> like what's the process there <laughs> i know well okay so um, 50, i know normally i do landscapes i love landscapes um so it was so about a year ago, I, like, I, you know, I go to these shows and I run with all these artists that, you know, do, can do these great big canvas paintings. And I thought, oh, I want to do something, you know, a great big piece, a big watercolor painting um, that somebody could hang. So on. just, sorry, did you feel that you wanted to do it or do you feel like you had to do it in order to be a real artist because all artists paint big? Because I've heard that before too. No, I don't. I don't, I just, you know, I wanted to be, I guess, a little competitive with the artists that can paint large, like large pieces, right? Because I'm thinking what, you know, does someone really want like a poster size over their couch, right? So, and in terms of, you know, watercolor, you know, I thought that I was really limited by the size of the paper. But, you know, in exploring what I did, I really thought, wait a minute, like, I don't have to, there's more to life than just the sheet of paper, right? So I'm thinking now way beyond, and oh my God, like it's just flooding my brain, but I need to make sure that my project was to paint these 52 paintings. So I started, I started out with, um, I saw an artist with this gigantic, glorious um, rose, and it was just a single bloom. And I thought, oh, I would love to do that in watercolor. Uh, I love saturated colors, but I, it's got to be impressionist, right? So I'm like, and, and, or, or expressionist. So I thought I'm going to do that. But then I, wait a minute. I don't, I don't focus <coughs> on one rose. It started off with a rose. And then my husband brought me home the most glorious bouquet of peonies. And it's a year ago almost this week that he brought them to me and I sat them on my table and I just watched them open. They were open like every hour was different. And then, you know, the light was shining in my uh, leaded glass door and threw rainbows on top of them. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh. Okay. This wow. Is <laughs> That's so <laughs> Tiffany. <laughs> well, it was just fabulous. I'll have to post on one. Cause it just was like, huh, right. <laughs> and, um, 
so then I was also studying, so I'm a Masterius artist. Um, so Masterius is an organization um, that uh, pairs emerging artists with master artists. And I was working with Veronica Funk. And so she was showing us these beautiful projects that she does um, about like 100 women, um, 100 grandmothers, 100 uh, mean women, like all of these projects. And I thought, will be really interesting to do a bloom a week for 52 weeks, right? And then that would bring me back to peony season. And I would hopefully have the skills to create this great big bloom. And it's also been a fun story because um, so many of my followers on my email, now I have something to talk to them about, right? right. So I show everybody the good, the bad, and the ugly about painting with watercolor. So I have shown the good, the bad, and the ugly in these newsletters, right? And I'll say, what the heck happened here? I have no clue. And, but I have, <laughs> honor, I have to honor the journey. Right. So, yeah. um, yeah, so I'm not afraid to show what I can do and what I can't do. And so this weekend, this past weekend, I tried a big peony just because I thought I don't want to leave it to the last minute, which is also something that I work on because I think usually I'm last minute Allison running around trying to get things put together. And so I've really said, no, you know what? Enjoy this journey. Be well prepared. So, so were all these peonies designed originally to be all the same size or they were all different sizes or they were just whatever you felt like you were going to grab? Well, I, I thought I was going to do a 12 by 12. So I have like, you know, arches paper, it's in a 12 by 12 block. And, you know, it's, it's really easy to pull it out and to put it on the table and to paint it. Um, I use um, pictures that I've taken out in nature. Lots of my subscribers have sent me um, peonies from their garden. Um, Oh, it's been the most fun journey because I've had some of my followers um, send me places of, of where to go because there's peony gardens. Um, someone told me about oh, the wow. Oshawa Peony Festival, which I'm going to be in in a month's time. So on June the 11th and 12th, there's the Oshawa Peony Festival, which is like all like almost like an Edwards Gardens out in Oshawa. And there's all vendors and stuff that are all, you know, related to florals and peonies at the time. So that, that sounds gonna, awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to launch all 52 plus the big one. So, yeah. So. And so you're working on the big one now. Yeah, I, I thought I'd take a stab at it because Lord help me. I don't want to be like a week before the show and I can't paint the friggin' thing. Right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I, and it, actually, I'm, I'm quite surprised. I'm quite surprised. So, um, you know, and I'll show you. So behind me is I put this all in my bedroom. <coughs> so this is, this is 30 of the 52 peonies that are hanging That's in so my cool. bedroom. Yeah. So they're like floor to ceiling almost. And um, yeah. And, and so it, it's, I'm, I wanted to see what it would look like. There's, uh, gosh, there's about 25 more to go, but I've painted up until 47. So I have four small ones and then whatever I choose for the large one. And so I'm going to mount it on a birch panel and cold wax the front of it so that somebody mm. could hang it above their couch and have this great big peony bloom. So... So what has been your kind of learning through that process? Like, obviously, you've learned techniques and stuff, kind of doing it that much. But what, what about what else have you kind of learned about kind of yourself or your style or your journey? Yeah, you know, like I, I, I researched, like I did more research. Um, I, I sketched peonies. I wanted to find out the origins about peonies. So I think the, the, the you know, you, we tend to stay static or, or some artists can stay tend to stay static. And I think it's when you, uh, when you learn something new, it puts you in that disequilibrium, right? And so you mm -hmm. want to be, you know, I, I think in life, I think sometimes you really need to be in that disequilibrium space. Um, and it's uncomfortable to be in that space. And so, you know, in my first career, my second career, your family life, every, everything, I think when you're in that challenging research kind of space, you learn you know, you learn so much. So 
uh, you know, to, to focus, to try not to do, I didn't want them to be like in realism. I want them to keep my style of the fast brush stroke, saturated colors. Um, and so, yeah, and, and lots of color. Right, so even a pink bloom, I want the, I love the pinks when they, and the reds when they touch green and when they touch gold. <laughs> um, and so I really try to utilize that, what I know and love about what I do with some new strategies and, and techniques. So learning about well, that... painting a sphere, like I didn't, I, I was never in art school. So I'm like, oh, oh yeah, the, you know, Painting the sphere with the, you know, with the light source on it. Well, right. That would apply. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you know, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you just have to be re ready to be, like, wait until you're ready to learn that stuff. Exactly. Right. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you can really get tied up in your own voice, but your own voice has to grow always as well too. Yeah. I think. You know. I think it's also interesting how, you know, I, I was just uh, looking at Facebook the other day because I was posting something and something came up that I had done, I guess, 13, maybe 13 years ago. So a long time ago of my original collection. And it's funny because I've been kind of that original collection has been coming up a lot recently. And I've been playing with some little 12 by two, or six by six of the same thing. And I kind of feel like I said, if I feel like I took it as far as I could when I had it, when I did it originally with the skill set that I had. But I kind of feel like now though my palette knife work is more sophisticated and I feel like it's worth kind of going back and continuing the journey as it were, you know, like re-exploring it and taking it kind of that level further. Yeah. So I think it is always interesting to kind of sort of, you know, roll around what you're doing and yeah. sometimes go back, but not in a, not in a way that's kind of like a comfort zone, but in a way to kind of continue a journey that you weren't able to do right. at the time you were doing it. Yes. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's so important to keep your history. You know, sometimes people look at their original work and they say, Oh God, that's awful. But it's not, it's where you were at that point in time. And there's always a, a, a lesson that you can learn from any time, any moment in time where it's either yeah. a great thing or a bad thing or something that, like you said, like what inspired you to do this? And I think about the awesome conversations with, uh, with Veronica Funk and my 003 um, artists and just the conversations that we had around, you know, using a different project. Think about, you know, a different space, even though you're working on your artwork, again, to just introduce something new that when you don't know what to paint, well, just choose this project, um, you know, something small, just as easy as sketching. Um, I said I could mm -hmm. never do portraits. And yet then it was like, well, a good artist can do their own portrait. This is what I've heard over and over again. Oh, yeah. well, you know, all of a sudden you start learning the basics of, of portrait drawing and, oh, it inspires me to no heck. I just love it. I love it. So, you know. Well, and I think if it inspires, you know, I think if it inspires you, I think that's awesome. Like I know I went through this phase too, where I thought, wow, I've been doing abstract for so many years now, I should really make sure that I can paint like something realistic, right? Have I lost my eye? And so I, I started this painting and I'm like, fuck, I'm so bored. Like it, just, it didn't do anything for me, right? So I was like, okay, I probably could force myself to go through this, but at what point, at what end? Like I'm gonna end up with something I'm probably not gonna love, doesn't have the energy, I'm kind of bored anyway. So you know, I, I still have- Learn from it, you know, and, and that's, you know, you don't wanna be, you don't wanna be bored and you have to draw, like I, all my, all my artist career so far, before I joined Mastrius, um, you know, people, my, my art friends, they said, you don't know about the rule of thirds? And I'm like, nope, never heard of it. Well, how do you paint the way you do without knowing, understanding, you know, how to compose something? But I think the mentor, um, Art Cunanan, uh, was an incredible mentor for me. Um, well, you know, he would look at those compositions and we never used a photograph. So we would always do, he would, you know, be inspired by the photograph or beyond plein air, sketch, and then paint from the sketch. So I never fell in love with, oh, here's the photograph. Oh, I'm going to frame it like this. And I'm going to take this piece. It's, I've always been able to invent. This isn't working. Oh, I'm going to cut out that. Or um, the light is not hitting here and this is in the way. Oh, I'm going to take that out too. So, you yeah. know, I think that that strategy was, um, really instrumental in 
But you also come from a creative family, right? Like I think just because you don't consciously know the rule of thirds doesn't mean you intuitively don't understand the rule of thirds right? and right. the golden <laughs> rule and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, or, or painting a sphere, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you, I think I think that it's one of those things that if you are if you come from a creative family and I think your your great grandfather or something was was an artist as well, right? Yeah. Then I think that you're surrounded by art, and I do think there's something genetically that allows you to to sort of see things in a bit of a different way. You have to hone those skills. I'm not saying it just comes naturally, right. but I think you start off with yeah. being able to see the world that way. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if you had said to me eight years ago that this is what I'd be doing, talking to you today. Um, sharing my business of art and my inspirations, I would have thought you were absolutely crazy. But um, <laughs> people you know, like that. <laughs> <I do. laughs> um, you know, it was it was on a bucket list because I, you know, I, you know, childcare is my first love. It's been dedicated my whole career. Um, the schools that uh, I, I run, we've we have a beautiful philosophy for Reggio Emilia, where uh, like an atelierista is part of the team high dedicated teachers with an incredible philosophy about how we are as humans living together in group in this world. And so I've always been inspired by children's graphic, um, graphic design and how they learn to communicate through graphic art. Um, and so, but I never had time for the art class or the art school. And so finally I took a week's holiday uh, after, I guess maybe 14 years of no summer holidays and I took a, a class uh, at the School of Fine Art uh, in Halliburton. So I studied with Gary Chapman. His technique was wet on wet. There wasn't any drawing so that didn't scare me off and it was about you know the Halliburton Highlands and so when we started you know laying the paint and letting it run into the and it was just like oh my goodness oh I love this. Right. And so I dabbled in some classes, but unfortunately he was unable to teach after that because I would have followed him to the end of time. Uh, and then I ran, like I took classes in Markham and I ran in and out of classes when the payroll was late and I was always late. And, and so I just thought, no, 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 I can't do this. It's too stressful. But I would set my easel up on a Friday night so that I would wake up on Saturday morning and it was at my dining room table and everything was ready. And then I would paint early Saturday mornings. And then once, uh, you know, I, I, I ended up going back to the School of Fine Art, meeting Art Cunan and taking classes here and there. And then once COVID hit, I, we were shut down for five months. And so it was an extremely stressful time because everything that you put into your businesses could, you know, could have been gone and were, was gone for so many small business entrepreneurs. And nobody knew. Right. Yeah, nobody I mean, knew. Nobody knew. You didn't know who to talk to and your accountant didn't know and the CRA didn't know. And so you just, there was such pent up um, anxiety. And so I took to walking it off. Right. My husband would look at my face and I was studying the books and he'd say, Allison, do you need to go for a walk? Yep. And off we would go. Right. So this is when I mentioned about the green field, you know, we walked that path sometimes twice a day. But what I did do um, was I set up my easel in my bedroom to get away from my family, right, and have some private time to paint. And the painting became kind of my meditation where I could lose myself in a painting because Lord knows I couldn't sit still for yoga. There's no way, right? I, think I know. Savasana... Just never do sp yoga just doesn't move fast enough for me. <laughs> Savasana is painful. I'm like, okay, what am I going to do next? I can't lie here. I can't be quiet, right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> the bane of extroverts. <laughs> exactly. So then, then the easel went up and it stayed up for good. And I put it like, so now my living room is my studio. I took the living room. I cut it in half made a square with the couches and now I have this lovely space by the windows um, to paint in every day. So, you know, it's, um, you know, there's always the good and the bad. There's always um, a silver lining to the rainbow uh, or to the rain clouds. Uh, and yeah. just, sometimes you have to wait to, you know, to see it. And so, yeah, painting really rescued me. And then I launched during that quiet time, um, a group, uh, I, I followed Julia Veenstra. She's always been a real favorite uh, artist of mine. I'd see her at the One of a Kind show. 
And I thought if she ever did lessons, I would try to do uh, move from watercolor to acrylic. And so right. during COVID, she did the paint along with Julia. Um, yeah, for Friday. Those were awesome. It was just like, it was like, we have to be at the cottage by one o'clock because I got to be on to see Julia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I tried to. My Wi-Fi at the cottage was so bad. It kept coming in and out. I'm like, I really want to see them because I just love the way she paints. I love the way she's watching her. I'm trying to get the, you know, the, the Wi-Fi. And, yeah, the yeah. and then, so when she announced that she was going to be a Masterious artist, I had no idea what Masterious was, but we joined that. And so, you know, learning the business of art from Julia Veenstra was brilliant. And so she's awesome. Yeah. She is, she's fantastic. And so um, I met the group of ladies that I work with now um, and we call us 003, but now we're going to be nine online gallery. Yeah, we're I saw that. Gallery. That's so cool. We're so excited. And so there's the nine of us and it's like nobody in, nobody out. Now you, this is it. We are, we are the nine. So stop. Online. I want to stop for a second. Stop. Yep. You moved, you've had, there's so much stuff. I need you to breathe for a second. <laughs> So you've mentioned Mastrius a couple of times. So actually, what I'd love to do is maybe uh, go a little bit into, into Mastrius in terms of how that kind of helped you or what the structure was and how that's still supporting. And then I would love to hear all about your night online. Yes. Okay. So um, Mastrius, so uh, Julia Veenstra is a, a master artist. This, this incredible organization is based out of Calgary um, by Julie DeBoer and Mark DeBoer has, um, they started this, this company. And so what they've done is they, they choose master artists from global, like around the world. And there's a group of no more than nine artists who can uh, sign up for, there's artists that like work on technique, on business, on a little bit of business, a little bit of, you can do critiquing, you can do um, how to find gallery representation. And so you usually sign up, it's a monthly class. Um, you have a mentor. So our mentor is, you know, Heather Kinahan. She is just like, she knows how to wrangle us and uh, keep us motivated, keep us organized. And um, so there's, in my group, there's four Calgarians, um, four Ontarians, and one that lives in Dubai. So Jane, uh, Jane Elliott, wow. love, she's in Dubai, but she is originally from Ontario. So she comes here, you know, during cottage season. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so you, you work. The important times. In, exactly. You know, during the good times, the mosquito times, but you work, so you work with this master artist and it's once a month and then you have a mid month meeting. Um, you know, they also have uh, like different, uh, challenges that you can do every month and so you can be a full-time master's artist or you can be part of the community network of art and have access to all of these master artists who come and critique your work or talk about gallery representation or um oh my goodness talk about color and composition um and so that you can invite you know a, a friend to come in and see and register for a you know uh an evening during the week. So it has been, so the nine of us, um, we just became so close so fast. And in our group, there is somebody who can do something, right? If you're having technology problems, we reach out to the artists. And, uh, you know, many artists said, oh, I feel so isolated. Well, that's one thing that I have never felt yet um, as an artist, because, you know, this group is just, um, absolutely phenomenal and so you know you have these opportunities to have these to meet you know in community and then our group went from julia veenstra to um uh veronica funk who's also a calgarian artist just so inspirational we did six months with her um we did six months or four months with bob burridge um who was he was fantastic too and now we're with artith goodwin and she has just, I guess we're all ready for this huge explosion. And, you, and how do you ever have access to all these artists, really, in, your, in the privacy of your own home, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, it was, it was it's, a, it's a fantastic community to be a part of. And then we learned about, you know, your work and your network. And so, you know, some of the artists in the 003, you know, are, we were in your pie art squared show. And so we send out, yeah, that was cool. Is, oh, try this. Oh, blue crows looking <laughs> for people. Oh, this, <laughs> we're always, uh, 
you know, we're always inspiring. It really is incredible to, and we're not competitive. And that's the, that's the most amazing thing about mastery is, is that it's, you don't feel that you're competing against anybody in this group. And that's, and, and that is really, really important as an artist, because you get online, you see how fabulous other people's stuff <laughs> And you can really get yourself carried away and derail your own intentions really, really quickly. So right. that's the other thing that um, the Masterious groups, they just say, you know, you're not in competition with anybody else. There's room for everybody. And, um, you know, and, and that's their, their own mentor. Come together, work together. We can all aspire together. And, and yeah. you know, and you you know it's funny because, yeah, when, one of my phrases is always uh, a rising tide floats all boats. Yeah. And that's really exactly what you're talking about. Like we can all benefit from each other's learnings without kind of that competitive spirit doesn't need to be there. No. Yeah. And that's, and it's great because it goes, <coughs> it's those kinds of people, when you start, you know, um, connecting with those kind of people, you just draw in more of these kinds of people. Right. And so, you know, because yeah. I was, I was talking with you, um, um, Karen Jaffrey uh, in Markham, uh, a Markham artist that I know through a friend, first career and second career kind of, you know, uh, butted heads. Um, and, and so she like, started to chat with me online and said, Oh, you know, you need to get into the pie art squared. Oh, your work is beautiful. And, and so, you know, here's a professional level artist just reaching out and checking in with you. Um, you know, and it, it, I, I can't even begin to say how incredible that is um, that, you know, that you invited us, you know, to be in your show. And now here I am on, you know, emerging artists. Like I just have felt as an emerging artist, like so incredibly, you know, supported and Marjolyn Hart. I love her work. And she did the same right when I started, um, oh, this is what your technique is or that your influence is. And like, I, I'm, I'm so blessed. I could just burst. Mm -hmm. so blessed. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it is uh, like, I've sort of found that through the artist network uh, group of artists as well. You know, when you do these art shows and you start to get to know people and it was just, it was so lovely to go back to the artist project this year after, you know, a couple of years of it not being around. And, you know, normally I do about 20 shows. So you see these people pretty regularly. Right. And it was just so great to reconnect and you realize just how much you've missed it. I mean, I really missed the in-person part. I mean, the, the connection and the texting and stuff is, it kind of, it keeps you sane, but it doesn't kind of feed my soul <laughs> the same way. Yeah. Well, it's fantastic when, you know, like, so I met all these artists online and then when you go to shows, you know, um, so it was the Stouffville show, um, the at Latchmart oh, yeah. show. I did that last year. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's how I, so yeah. I, I was, I looked across, I turned, glanced across a crowded, you know, market and I saw Margelin and I was like, oh my God, I know that. I know that. So I go beetling over like, you know, like some groupie, right? Some <laughs> Concert I'm like oh my god Marjolyn it's Allison it was just like so it was just so fantastic so we chatted then I you know moved down the way and I saw you and I'm like oh oh my gosh so I go beeling over like I'm like oh my gosh Allison you know my husband he left because <laughs> he's like Allison you're kind of embarrassing I'm like I know but you know, when you see everybody online and then you meet them in person. Well, I'm sure nobody made you feel embarrassed. I think it's always great. It's always great as an artist to talk to another artist, right? I know. I know. He, he supports me 100%. But, uh, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know all, all, of these, all of these mentors, it's when you, you reach out. And even when you're feeling so alone, you're not alone. Right. And to reach out and join these networks, I'm going to come to the artist network. I have this year, I've got panties on the brain. I've launched all these projects and um, I'm going to, I'd love to do, you know, apply for the artist network uh, shows next year. So you know, mm -hmm. I put that. Well, and you have, you have to plan your, your schedule, right? But I, the one thing I just really wanted to kind of point out, which I think is really, really critical is, you know, I think most artists, if you reach out to them for, thoughts or advice or whatever I think most artists will actually respond back I find I get texts all the time from people I don't know and if I haven't responded I apologize but I usually really do try to because you know those people helped me or different people helped me when I was at the beginning of my career and I'm still now at a mid-career and I've still got so much further to go right so there's other people that can still continue to help yeah 
Yeah. And I think that constant inviting, you know, just, you know, to come and, and you have to take some personal responsibility to find what you're looking for. And, mm -hmm. you know, as, as an emerging artist, like I have to, uh, you know, there's so many things that I want to do. And in any business, because I, I'm an entrepreneur in childcare, I have four schools. I've been through the process of, um, you know, connecting and meeting people. And, you know, we've educated like over 10,000 children, uh, you know. In That's the pretty awesome. Yes, it is awesome. And so um, I'm so proud of that work. I'm still so very much a part of that work. Um, but, you know, as, as when you, when you move into a, another career, um, you know, you also have to reach out and ask for help, but also set some realistic goals for yourself, right? So even though I want to do all these crazy reels and I want to do this and I want to do that, when I thought about who I am as an artist, and this is kind of now this relevation of, okay, I don't need to paint huge paintings. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to, um, do reels that don't suit my personality. So I am, right. I'm very, I'm a very extrovert person, but I don't want to be dancing on, you know, on a reel. Right. So what I thought, cause is, that's the thing this month. <laughs> was, yeah, I'm like, not I know. Dance, you know, but, but what I do do is I want like, you know, my art is I want you to, to transcend yourself standing in a moment, looking at a fallen down barn, or standing on a bridge and just listening and breathing and smelling everything about that forest. And so I want to transcend that moment with my viewers. Um, and so that's what really needs to happen in my reels. Yeah. So you can, I, th I think, I think that's a really important point. I think there's kind of, you can spend a lot of time chasing a bunch of stuff. There's a fine line, I think, between chasing everything that's new and kind of also kind of going, okay, I'm not sure if I want to do reels or not, because I'm not really sure exactly how they work. So I need to at least do some exploration to see if that fits for me. And if it does, what's my authentic reel, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and so sometimes that you know, kind of contradicts my personality, because if you're standing in front of me and I, you know, I get a good glass of wine or a yummy meal or whatever, I always do this, you know, like a happy dance in front of friends and family. But I'm thinking, okay, this is public. So I don't. Well, I, th I think it's also, it's design, it, it, the intention is different. Like for me, a lot of this stuff is about the intention, right? Like, so if you're sitting in front of your friends having a glass, the intention is like, oh my God, I'm so excited about this great glass of wine, right? Yeah. Which is very different when you're setting up the camera and now you're like, now I'm going to dance. I'm making sure that my butt looks good in these pants because I'm going to be seen from the back. I mean, this is a whole <laughs> different thing, right? Than just someone happened to come into your studio and you happen to be dancing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, I think, I think, you know, uh, as a, as an emerging artist, I've chosen like five plus, but I try to think about five things, right? So, you know, right now I'm really exploring, I, I need to explore. I've come to a crossroads now where I love these peonies and I, you know, I love to paint peonies, but I love landscape. And so, you know, I have to understand where I fit in now in an art collector's market. And I didn't know that really two years ago, right? My goal was to paint and to paint more often and to, you know, to do a website and all those kinds of things. So, you know, I, I'm really trying to explore that. Um, nostalgia has a big part of what I do that, you know, it, it's sort of, again, standing in that moment, remembering that moment and being able to bring it home and, and collect it and hang it on your wall. So, you know, yeah. um, you know the, the characteristics of a nostalgic person, right? So I'm looking like really into those kinds of uh, research now. And then sort of saying, okay, what can I do with watercolor? How big can I go? And then knowing, do I really need to be there? So I'm looking at other <coughs> who are similar, uh, you know, to mine. And I know who they are, but I don't know their story. So that, oh, yeah. Okay, so there's some research, you know, that I need to do. You should listen to uh, Hillary Slater. I interviewed oh, her yes. probably yeah. about a year ago. I, I yeah, just got some interesting stuff. I visited her studio and uh, loved Oh, it. cool. Uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I, you know, I, there's that. And then to do some shows that's not going to exhaust my mine and my husband's energy because you know we still are first time career full time career with childcare it's just yeah. to get to you know right now i'm working from home doing all the policy and everything and also making it more beautiful for when parents are ready to come back to school right so then i think oh okay so what works with one works with the other 
So, you know, how can I be more inviting? How can I, you know, uh, look at marketing that invites everybody to join? So whether mm -hmm. in art and so forth. So, you know, it, it's, it's so time consuming, but I also know the limitations to say, I don't want to be out doing markets every single weekend because I'm going to bust right you're gonna burn out yeah yeah well and i think it's it's, it's interesting too, because i often see artists on both sides of it one that they're so afraid to take the next step um and they'll go and they'll, they'll look at a visit a show for three or four years before they make that decision um and i always kind of feel like there's no there's never going to be that right answer that's going to say this is exactly what you need to do right so you have to kind of balance that with and i totally understand because i'm more like you where it's kind of like i have a whole four hundred thousand ideas but I was brainstorming with my husband this past weekend. He said, well, what about this? I said, oh, I've got tons of ideas, but I also know that right now I just don't have the bandwidth to execute them properly because I don't want to do something half-assed. If I'm going to go into that area or I'm going to do something different or I'm going to branch out into different markets, I want to make sure I'm really prepared. And as it is right now, I'm not, I'm not keeping up with what I should be doing. So, you know, it's kind of like you have to plan that, right? Well, you know, I, I think five is, is manageable, like, you know, just to, to improve, you know, in, in five different, you know, areas. And that's what I try to, I try, right. It's not always, yeah. um, you know, but with the peony show, um, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I want to, you know, I have these 52 peonies, they're beautifully framed. Um, they're, you know, I'm going to do a show actually at my house two weeks before the, the June weekend. So, because I want to set up, I don't want to run into any crazy um, happenings when you're setting up a, a, a whole new, like, showing. So, um, right. so, if you would like, if you send me an email um, on May the 28th um, at my Goodwood house, I'm going to have a, a show. The 52-week peonies are all going to be displayed. And so, you know, I've, I have cards, they're ready, they're coming, and I'm going to do some lovely pillows. And so, you know, there's things where, and I'm like, okay, what is doable? What will look beautiful? And what can, um, you know, how can I display this to my best of abilities? So mm -hmm. I'm really excited for that. And they're the, the people who have been following my journey. Um, they hear my real voice, um, you know, because I'll, I'll say, oh, what the hell happened to this peony? Like, you know, what was I thinking? Um, so they know my personality. And that's why I invited them to my home to come and see it before I do the real launch in, in, uh, in Oshawa. So I'm so excited because I think that I've been better prepared for this than anything else in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds really incredible. Unfortunately, I've got a show that weekend. Otherwise, I would love to come up and check out your know, like Weddings. I'm like, what do you mean? You're oh, yeah, we can allow to have weddings again. Because yeah. <laughs> so. everything's like, yeah, it hasn't happened the last two years. So everything's happening every single weekend. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, but, you know, if, if just, you know, follow, be a subscriber, um, you know, and have some special, um, you know, prices for, for the people that come to my house at first so because they've been part of that journey. And, and I want to ask them, you know, what could I do different? Is there anything that, you know, that you see that needs to be here so then i have another two weeks before the real launch you know at oshawa so yeah so it's your soft launch and are they are you selling them separately then yeah so i'm going to sell uh you know the the individual peas separately some of them nobody you know they're not going to want them <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you don't know that I'm there's something for everybody <laughs> because you know, if i had it my way i would do sort of the good, the bad, me, well, I need, I need two positives and a trial, right? Um, so that, you know, because I feel that when I learned watercolor, like I, people, people can't believe that I didn't have an art background or that I didn't, like that I've only painted for less than eight years. And they think you only did this eight years. I said, and if you'd asked me, I would never, I would never have said that I could do this. Right. Right. Um, I never could draw. I never could this. And so, you know, I never, I've never painted a single bloom. Now I've painted it 52 times. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can do it in your sleep. <laughs> now I can do it in my sleep. I can catch them. I can research them. But I think, you know, I hope that people, whatever it is that they want to do and they say, well, I can't. But you know what? If, if you want to be a hiker, all you have to do is get a pair of running shoes off and take one step. There, you're a hiker. Yeah right? Um, if you want to do something, the only thing that really is in your way is your mindset. So, you know, you really just have to battle your mindset and say, hey, I'm going to try. So, and yes, yeah. Karen, they're in Schitt's Creek. So, 
<laughs> so my town where I live is the um, the filming set for the Canadian uh, TV series Schitt's Creek. Really? Oh, that's so lovely. I love that show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. And so, you know, I'm right down the street from where they did all the filming. So, um, you know, it's always, you know, a lot of fun. The, the peonies are going up in, you know, in Schitt's Creek. So if you want, you can come for the day. Um, go see all the buildings of Schitt's Creek if you're a, a fan. And come to the Goodwood House and have tea and see peonies and make a day of it. So, yeah. That sounds pretty awesome. And I think we're almost out of time. Yes, yes. So, well, that was fast. <laughs> that was fast, I know. And then just... Uh, a little bit of a plug, the Nine Online Gallery. Um, yes. This 003, uh, my 003 ladies um, artists, we decided that we wanted to do something all together and do a collaborative of, and we launched, you know, Nine Online Gallery. And so if you follow us on Instagram, there's going to be lots of fun. And again, you know, Nine Supportive Women, we've supported each other over the past year and a half. And um, yeah, we want to, you know, share what we've done with the world and inspire others. So. And so this is that you're working on collaborative pieces or are you just collaborating to produce shows? Um, well, you know, we, it, it might be um, like, we're going to all be sort of, you know, individual within a, a collaborative um, and, you know, show work and, and do online shows. And then there might be pop-up shows and guest, you know, appearances by other artists and, and, you know, kind of support what give back to the community, what, the community certainly has um, supported us with. So it's going to be really mm -hmm. exciting. So we're having Oh, that's fun. awesome. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be interested in my guests that are coming up. Stephanie McLean is part of a group of seven artists uh, oh. from uh, Canada, US, and I think Australia. And they actually are working on a collaborative painting. So they kind of actually physically ship it from one location to the other, and the other next artist works on it. Oh, my goodness. So I'm interviewing all seven of, of those artists. So I think we're quite fascinating. McLean artists? Stephanie McLean is her name. I don't know if they have a, a name yet because I'm interviewing her in a couple of weeks um, oh. about the initiative, but it's, uh, watch that for them. I know I've, we've, I've tried a couple of collaborations and they're tough. <laughs> they're hard. Well, you know, and it, it's interesting because, you know, when, um, um, so Bob Burridge and Kate Burridge um, were working with us because we were just starting and thinking about this. And Bob is the artist. Kate is the mastermind behind all of the marketing and so forth. And so she, um, you know, she was encouraging. She says, you know what, like for a group of ladies, there's really no one that has to be in charge. There's no real pushy. There's nobody who's really um, annoying. <laughs> right. Well, that's so, good. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And and we met, um, so after COVID, we, the, the Calgarians jumped on a flight and came to Ontario. And so we had eight out of the nine and we had a retreat and we just loved each other for five days. <laughs> really kind of, wow. you know, when, when you live with somebody for five days um, and we painted together and we supported the Georgian Bay studio tour. And um, yeah, it was, it was, we wanted Julia Veenstra to come together because she's the, the artists that we all followed to get to Master Us. Um, but she right. was, she actually, she was in Calgary at the time. So she <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Which is kind of funny. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to sort of cut us off because I just don't want to, I want to make sure we can yeah. capture all this and it gets saved. Um, but I have so enjoyed talking to you and I really love your work. And I'm so glad you joined us at Pirate Square and hopefully you'll do it again next year. I will. And I will be applying to one of your shows for sure next year. <laughs> so it's on my list. Okay, that sounds perfect. Well, hopefully we'll see you at one of the outdoor shows anyway. Just uh, sure. it's always nice to connect. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Okay, so awesome. Much. Thank you so much, Allison. Awesome. That's been fabulous. Okay, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Whoops. Screwed that up. <laughs>